Hello and welcome. I'm Les Bubka and this is Accidental Podcast or something like that. My guest today is Christian Vedevard, if I pronounce that properly. Um, hello, yes, Christian. How are you? <laughs> Hi, I'm fine. Nice to meet you. Thanks for inviting me to your podcast. Uh, pleasure, pleasure. I, I'm, I'm following your uh, actions and stuff online and through the seminars with Ian. So um, it was nice to catch up with you and actually meet you uh, kind of nearly personal. Yeah, nearly personal is the way to do it these days. <laughs> Could you tell us um, something about your background and uh, in martial arts? What did you start? How did you do it? And where are you going? <laughs> oh, a lot of questions. Uh, I don't know if you know the, uh, the German Swedes. Uh, it's called uh, Überraschungsei. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> they do their commercials with exactly three questions. Do you want something sweet, something to play and something uh, exciting? And <laughs> you need this sweet. <laughs> okay, <laughs> back to your question. Um, yes, um, I, I started um, to learn karate, Shotokan style, uh, when I was uh, 13 years old in 88. Uh, yeah, I became 14 quite after that, and uh, right from the beginning, it was my my biggest hobby. Hobby is not the right word. It was uh, fulfillment. I spent all my time in the dojo. I um, found friends. My beginner trainer was kind of a father figure, and I loved it. I went to training five times a week, and some some months later, when I got a little bit experienced. I went to tournaments and so four or five trainings a week and tournaments on the weekend. So karate became the, let's say, most important, most, most important part of my life. And um, the only reason I was good in school was my mother telling me, if you want to go to training in the evening, you have to be good at school. And so <laughs> this worked. Yeah, so um, I trained all, all of those years from 88 up to now. And um, after 14 years in Shotokan style, I changed my style within the German karate organization uh, because I met a guy named, named uh, Ludwig Binder. He's a, now a seventh degree black belt and um, well known in Germany. And he was kind of strange. His karate was different to everything I have seen and experienced before. It was mm -hmm. close range, it was elbows and knees and sometimes headbutt and uh, with grappling. And this was amazingly different to what I have experienced up to this day. And I said, okay, this is karate that I like. I want to learn this and now um, we are best friends. He is godfather of my children. Um, and he taught me most, most everything I know. And um, then from a certain point on, we developed things together. And um, on, on a sidebar, I went to other arts. I went to kickboxing, boxing, uh, Aikido, Jiu-Jitsu, but without tests. So I have no degrees in this art. I just went there to shut my mouth, to <laughs> get into the line and train and not to be the responsible one. And this was amazing. This was, uh, and it enriched everything I knew already from the karate side. Yeah, so in short, um, I have some experience in other arts. I used everything I saw in this art to enrich my karate, to bring it into my point of view regarding bunkai and self-defense. And yeah, now I teach seminars all over Germany and in several uh, foreign countries. And this is what I love to do. I, I love and like teaching and um, bring joy and excitement to the students so that they um, how can I put this, that they experience um, both intellectually and physically that it works what they do. So mm -hmm. this is what, what I want to do. 
Excellent. Um, I notice I notice that um, uh, watching your your seminars and and stuff uh, from 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 my eyes, I can see some solution from uh, Ashihara Karate. Did you have any experience with Ashihara Karate? <laughs> A very good and clever question. Um, in Germany, let let me start by stepping one step back. In Germany. Uh, you have your style and mostly you only train your style. And uh, if you don't do, go to another style, another dojo or another seminar, you're kind of a whistleblower and uh, kind of. It, it feels like, and I've heard other people telling me that they have been treated like this because they did go yeah. to other seminars or other teachers. And um, I have, I have a, a habit Everywhere I go to <laughs> holiday, I put my gi in my bag and looking for a dojo. And um, I think it was 2013, I had my first visit to New York City and I looked up the internet and there are several dojos and I found a very nice dojo called the, uh, the dojo owner and uh, her name is Shihan Michelle Gay from Kenba Khan Karate Dojo in New York City in Manhattan. And um, she said, yes, come. And this is a Oyama, World Oyama based dojo. Mm -hmm. And um, so I got in contact with this full, full contact guys the first time and I felt so home. This <laughs> was what I love. A little bit of... Um, a harder training, a little bit of more contact. Mm -hmm. And um, so you don't have to ask, does it work what I'm doing? You just experience it yeah, yeah. by um, something I call biofeedback. So <laughs> you get a physical answer. You, you see it. And uh, I have never seen, I've never seen someone um, being hurt or damaged in this training there. Um, since 2013, I visited the, visited the dojo several times and got those friends over to Germany to train with me in Germany. Um, this is amazing karate. So, yeah. yes, and one of my <laughs> teachers today, um, his name is Jürgen Höller, based in uh, Bonn, the former capital city of Germany. Mm. Um, he is a... Um, Ashihara and Enshin Karate uh, trainer and he is a very very nice guy 70 years old nearly mm -hmm. 67 I think is he now and uh, he is uh, more fit than I am it's amazing mm. yeah I enjoyed that part of it because uh, Ashihara Karate and Kyokushin is the kind of core of my my system so I always when I see people doing Ashihara I, I know that one I like that one it's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> one, one similarity for, for the both of us. Huh? Yeah. Um, what actually led you to karate? What happened that you joined the dojo? You went one day and decided, yes, I'm going to do karate. Yeah. I, I think I was 10 or 11 years old and I saw those movies uh, back in the 80s. That was fascinating. And I thought, I want to be able to move that elegant like they do with high kicks and spinning kicks and all those stuff. And I wanted to learn this, but unfortunately in my city where I grew up, there was no dojo. And mm -hmm. so with this young age, I was allowed by my parents to go with, uh, with a train to the next city all alone because my parents didn't um, um, join me in all my ways to dojos everywhere. And so I did it all alone and I trained and it was nice, but I came home too, too late. So my parents told me, uh, you are too, late, too young for this. And um, yeah, 11, two years, two and a half years later, I got aware that there is a dojo next door. <laughs> all right. and, and then I moved there and I never left. Today I'm the trainer for black belts and um, advanced students in this same club. So I never left the club. And yeah, accidentally, I, I found this, this dojo by accident. And um, this is 
besides my girlfriend and my kids the love of my life <laughs> yeah I, I can <laughs> i can understand the same for me uh, but it's very unusual that you are in still in the same dojo usually people travel um and move but um, but very, very well very yeah very good um i, I did I, i i did i was member of several other clubs to learn from the best trainers i got in contact with but i always kept my home dojo with me mm -hmm. i ask this question to uh, every guest of mine uh because that's what i'm mostly all about so what impact karate had or has on your mental health oh yeah hmm. yeah this is a, a very personal question and um, i i don't think that i have been asked this before but um everything i i am today uh charact characterly i don't know the right word character so on yeah on my character on my on my straightness on my planning for life uh, how i behave how gentle i try to be how uh how demanding and how um how i try to be as a human being for and in the community it all relates to karate and uh, this is going back to my beginner trainer um he told everyone if you train karate it is good for your health it is good for your for your character building and so on and uh, with this young age of 13 14 i got that point and i said to myself nearly every day um okay you are a karate guy you can do that you can run that fast for a physical education test in school you can as much push up as needed for the training you can uh, make a good mark in a test in school you can do that you can do that you can do that regardless what came up in my life i always um remembered what i have accomplished in karate even a, even a yellow belt i accomplished that and the next one and possibly i made a point in point fighting against my hardest partner in training and i said yes i did that and because i did that i can do everything else and so um i i think i get my inner strength and belief in myself um because of karate so it gave me everything and this is what i try to do um today with everyone joining the dojo floor with me i try to be that role model for everyone what my trainer was for me so and the the last point my trainer ludwig binder once said the highest rank in the dojo has to be the nicest guy so he mm. has to be the first who says hello to a new one he has to be the one who everyone relates to i want to be like this because of gentleness and uh, modesty and so on and this is what i try to do so karate made a very big difference for me excellent that's that's excellent um so i i believe in exactly the same thing and uh my motto is the strong and caring people are the pillars of the society and karate is helping to cultivate them so that's on point with with what you said um i okay. wrote this in your book <laughs> <laughs> amazing we're going to talk about, uh, talk about books a bit later um okay i've got i see a huge sign karate praxis behind you Can you tell us about what what is karate praxis and what is the meaning of modern tradition? That's very interesting for me. Modern tradition contradiction. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it is. And uh, this is exactly what I wanted to express. Uh karate praxis. Um first not everyone gets the sense of this of this word because uh, praxis 
seems not to be uh, an, an English word that meets the, the meaning of the German thing. Praxis means nothing else than uh, application. So okay. the place where a doctor is located in Germany means praxis. Okay. So you go there to have to be, to, to be treated. So something works. And uh, karate praxis means karate application. Oh, okay. So let me see if there's coming too much uh, light. On the oh, don't worry, I've got, the, I've got the same problem. <laughs> so I think it will, will be better. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, it, yeah. I, I can see you okay on the screen, so. Yeah. Um, and um, if you want to pass the first degree black belt test in Germany, you have to write an essay. It's not just a physical test. You have to write something. And um, I wrote about practical application and physical information because of um, functional blocking and um, getting in real contact, like all the like all the uh, full contact styles do every time. No? Mm -hmm. A little bit harder in training, a little bit touching each other and not this uh, sun dome with only some three centimeters or so. And always punching and kicking in the air, even a partner is right in front of you. Yeah. So if you always stop one centimeter before him, you don't need him. That was what I thought. If you have a partner, touch him. So, mm -hmm. um, and I wrote this essay how important it is that everyone feels in every training, in every class, that what he has learned today in Qatar, in Kihon, in, in, every, in every training method you use, that this works in relation to a partner. So I wrote this essay and it was called Karate Praxis. Oh, excellent. Uh, uh, as, as a lot of essays, um, as a lot of essays end up on a on a stake, and after that, no one looks in it and no one uses it. Uses uses it. I asked my trainer, since he was so well known as a seminar leader in Germany, um, if he would like to support me in becoming a seminar teacher, because mm -hmm. I want to teach this. And so in 2008, I started Karate Praxis uh, with Bunkai seminars, with um, self-defense self seminars, and then it spread it out. So Karate Praxis is about functional, practical training with a kata relation and a Bunkai that really works uh, on a self-defense, um, in a self-defense way. Mm -hmm. And the modern tradition? The modern tradition, yeah. <laughs> uh, I wrote an essay about this as well. Um, it will be part of my next book. It will be published in this. Um, it's about, let, let's say, Master Gishin Funakoshi from the Shotokan style. Mm -hmm. uh, he put out this uh, 20 rules, how to behave, how to relate, and all those stuff. And a lot of Shotokan dojos put a picture of him, of him on a wall in the dojo or on the website and relate to the sentence and this and this and this, but no one behaves that way. Yeah. So no, uh, you don't have to change a cutter, but in application, the, 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 what is the right word? Um, it is the complete, complete, difference so you have yeah, to yeah. change it so um and a lot of other sentences or quotes that are known but not followed and i said okay let's let's see what the ancient masters wanted to tell us via kata via quotes via text and mm -hmm. use them in a way that are um, needed in the 21st century. I strongly believe if Gishin Funakoshi would live today, he wouldn't train that way that he trained back in his days. So oh, definitely. Would, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 
he he would have um, adjusted have he would have adjusted his methods his knowledge his um, his um, tools huh? and possibly he wouldn't only hit a makivara because there have been pets developed yeah. and possibly he would have trained with uh, other clothes because modern functional clothes are um, easier to wear and um, comfortable, more comfortable to wear than, than a heavy karate gi. And I don't know what would have happened, but um, I want to transfer the Rusi, the, the Rusi, the Versi, Versi roots and content, the ancient masters uh, prepared and developed for us um, to the 21st century in order to um, raise interest in the youth and young adults and seniors to decide to go to karate and not to one of all the other systems uh, which are probably um, more successful these days like BJJ mm -hmm. and MMA and Krav Maga. Um, those are new systems and they are good, but they are based on old systems. So mm -hmm. we are the original and um, we can be back on the shortlist for everyone interested in martial arts. And it's up to us to bring our content to deliver it in a way that is interesting for the next generation. Excellent. So that is modern tradition. Excellent. You, you mentioned that uh, you went and traveled to different dojos, learned from different people, stole stuff, learned stuff, and started using stuff. <laughs> So my question is, uh, how did you modify your syllabus? Because we all got the all traditional syllabus. For myself, I had to heavily modify it to fit my vision of karate. How you go about that? Yeah. Um, since, since I have friends in uh, different English speaking countries, uh, I learned the term 3K karate. <laughs> that is not a very well-known term in Germany. So no one says this, but mm -hmm. it's true. 3K karate, that was what I've learned uh, in the first 13, 14 years um, up to the point where I met, met my trainer. And um, now with all the developments over the years, I would say I changed my syllabus um, that way that Everything we use, every method, I call those methods. Kiron is a method and Kata is a method. And everything we, we do, train, use, pets, ground fight, self-defense, drills, um, Bunkai, Kata, Kiron, everything has to um, how, how is the right word? Um, give you the possibility to defend yourself in case of need. Mm -hmm. So everything I do um, in a training, let's say a normal training class of 90 minutes, everything we do in the first parts of the training will be tested and trained with partner in the, in the end of the training. So um, my, my usual, usually uh, training syllabus is at least 50% working with partners, mostly an hour and half an hour, 40 minutes to prepare the content for today uh, mm -hmm. so that everyone gets it and then use it with partners. So in short, um, I changed my syllabus that we do everything we learn with partner in every training and in the sem on the seminars as well. Uh, did you notice any changes in, um, how to say it, now I lost the word. <laughs> um, what the outcomes did you notice? Is your students happier with that way or, or um, a learning quicker? How, what outcomes are of the changes? That is an interesting question. And um, there are two different outcomes, I think. Um, the first thing is people get aware what they are doing. So even the beginner in the very first training, when he enters a dojo for the first time, 
he gets information how to punch, how to how the Zuki works, and then he will use it on a pet or even with a partner. And then he gets a sense. Why am I learning this very technique? And so for the next block and for the next technique as well. So I um, got aware that people learning faster and um, knowing why they do it and in this relation, how to do it. So mm -hmm. yes, faster. But, and this is the, 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 other kind of, uh, the other side of the coin, people are, people's karate are, is, are, is, is not looking that nice like a tournament interested guy anymore. So you can see that they are practical, that they have a practical approach in moving and stances and um, how they move their body. And um, you see this in, 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 in every move that they have a practical approach and not a tournament goal. So th these are the two points. They are learning faster. They have a lot of fun. They don't leave the club. They come and stay. Mm -hmm. For often in my experience, in my, in my community, they come and stay up to black belt. They don't leave. Mm -hmm. They don't go to other arts. Like someone said to me, um, a woman once came into my dojo and said, can I, can I join your dojo? Can I train at your dojo? Um, you are my last chance. And I said, how can I be your last chance? What's up? <laughs> she said, I'm learning 20 years karate. I'm a second degree black belt and I have no idea how karate works. I will try with your dojo because I know you are doing the seminars. And uh, if this doesn't work, I will stop karate and I will go to Krav Maga. And I said, mm -hmm. this is all wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and um, yeah, so I want to to um, give people the opportunity to experience that their karate is worthy in, in the ability to defend themselves and experience that in every training. Mm. I've, got, I've got exactly the same. So <clears throat> uh, my, my training with my students is basically most of it is partner work. So like I say, my kata looks very, uh, not very uh, eloquent and nice, but when people look at it, they say, oh, he knows what he's doing. And when I'm grading people, when I'm at uh, examination panels, I look for that, you know, it's not the prettiness of it, aesthetics, but I want to see that the person doing it knows what they do. And that's a huge difference. And like you said, it doesn't look pretty, but it works. That's what, what, is, uh, what I have to do. It seems we are brothers in mind. So this is, uh, yeah, exactly <laughs> what I do. But um, I'm not, um, um, ah, this is not a surprise for me since you have a full contact background and full contact katas are pretty obvious in what they are about. I, I, every time I see a full contact kata, it is catchy for self-defense. You see, okay, this is that, and this is that, and nice, and nice. And they don't often don't look pretty, but you see what they're about, and this is amazing. Hmm. Yeah. Um, like question, a bit of a different way. Um, you've got a person, you said about the 3K karate. You've got a person, instructor coming to you, says, I had enough of uh, 3K. I would like to start doing more practical stuff. What steps would you recommend? Oh, um, yeah. How can I? The answer is very short. Uh, the very most important point, the most important step is already made, coming with this decision mm. and staying. So come and stay and uh, get aware. So train with partner. Okay, a very short answer, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you published a book. Uh, what's the exact title? Because I can't remember. Yeah. I'm waiting for it. Is the Pinan phenomenon or Heian phenomenon? Yeah, the Heian Kata Bunkai phenomenon. Um, Tell me about it. 
yeah, yeah, my pleasure. Um, first of all, I love this content because um, uh, 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 it was 2015. I met Ian Abernethy on a seminar and uh, he came up with his point of view that um, cutters have the ability to give you different concepts. So if your plan works, then everything's fine. But if your opponent behaves in an unexpected way, then Qatar gives you an opportunity how to treat with the new situation. And he called this, what if? Mm -hmm. And uh, I worked with Bunkai a lot of years before, beforehand. And um, this was new. This what if was new for me. And I went home with this, oh, what if? If this doesn't work, then the kata gives you an, an alternative. And if this doesn't work, next alternative. And uh, my, my brain was full, I think over months without any conclusion. I just wor was working on, on this thought and um, this was very interesting. And then there was this uh, second quote by um, Master Shoki Motobu that the direction you move towards in a kata is not your opponent coming from, it is your um, relative position towards the opponent. And um, this finished me off. So th this <laughs> two quotes um, changed my whole view on kata. So I, I didn't do any um, um, piece by piece bunkai anymore. So uh, you can do this in this technique and this in this technique and this and this and no side, no technique or part of a kata relates to all the others. And then I came, then a thought came up in my mind and it was, um, Gishin Funakoshi, who said, if you know these five forms, you have the ability to most to defend yourself in most situations. And it was this, this little part of, if you know these five forms that mm -hmm. started me writing this book. He didn't say, if you know this form or this form, he said, if you know all the five. And so mm -hmm. I uh, tried to get a bird perspective on all the five and not seeing one cutter after the other. I looked on those cutters in total. And then I searched um, what is in, integrated in the first cutter on the defensing side and on the offensive side. So which attacks are there? Um, which stances? Um, which block techniques? So which distances? And so on. And then the second cutter. What is new in uh, regards to the first cutter? So what is additional on, on the, in, in learning content? And so on and so on. And so I found out that each cutter relates very much to the, to the former cutter and how they work together. And um, so, for instance, I write, I wrote in my book that all the counter attacks of the second kata in the Shotokan uh, point, from the Shotokan point of view, the Herr Nida and the second kata, all those counter attacks can be taken as attacks. So all those moves, if you don't block beforehand, they are attacks mm -hmm. and not counters. If you use those techniques as attacks, the Herrn Sander in um, chronological order are the defenses against the attacks from Herrn Nidan. So the, the, the counter after the first block, these two moves are mm -hmm. blocked with this move from Herrn Sander and so on and so on. And uh, I get goosebumps every time I speak about it. <laughs> Amazing. Excellent. Yeah, um, I will send you a book um, on Friday. A new package arrived with books. Excellent. So I have new English versions uh, with me now. 
and um, I will send a book off to you right right tomorrow. Okay, well, we, well, I, I call it, I've got um, um, kind of similar view to it, but we call it a, that cut I've got the solution for a cascade of failures. So every failure I've got the solution in kata. So yeah, every st step in kata, it's something you made wrong. The kata can fix it for you. <laughs> so, Great. But, yeah, but um, yeah, it works really, really good for me as well. Um, any other plans? Tell us about your plans, where we can find you on social media and all the platforms. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, in, in this COVID times, I started to do more on, uh, on the web since seminars uh, have been canceled um, yeah. everywhere. So I started this um, Karate Praxis live online trainings, Mondays and th Thursdays on uh, 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. German time. Um, and I like that. And people from all over the world are joining in and seeing and this is this is very very nice and so um, I think this practical training community in karate all over the world has got um, the opportunity and the chance and I think we all do stepping a little bit closer together with friends mm -hmm. from Canada the US and uh, uh, Australia UK Germany so this is a very good thing. And uh, so um, everyone interested can find my content on the web, karatepraxis.com. And um, Instagram, the same, YouTube, same, always karatepraxis.com and see what I'm doing. And on my website, there's a calendar integrated. So um, one who likes to join me on a future seminar, since this is what I'm telling the Germans, um, yeah, beginning this week, I told in a video that we all should plan seminars for the future since there will be seminars, but those seminars which need a pre-registration can only take place if you reg register now for the seminars in two months or three months. Uh, otherwise, the host will have to cancel the seminars because no one has to register has registered. So I, I think um, if we register for seminars, we find interesting um, and have the chance to get the money back if the seminar has to be canceled, then um, we have something to look forward to and no risk to lose money. So um, speaking for my seminars, uh, everyone can register, and if those seminars have to be cancelled, uh, I will wire all the money back. This is not the point. Uh, yeah, my future plans. Um, I hope in two and a half weeks' time, um, I can have my uh, Karate Praxis retreat on Castle Stalek in Germany, which is very nice. I have it here on my shirt. <laughs> um, <laughs> and on the background, yeah. Um, I, I hope this seminar can take place. I'm not so sure. I will know this uh, in eight, eight days time. But what hopefully take place will be a seminar on the very northern part of Germany on the Danish border uh, in a city called Lech. Uh, I will have lead teach a two-day seminar regarding my kata bunkai um, stuff out of my book and um, on the second weekend in September in uh, Brugge, Belgium I will teach a three-day seminar um, in-depth seminar for kata nisho shiro and I hope people will register and we can start having uh, physical seminars uh, again so mm. I look I hope that people register and come to those seminars so that we can yeah, have real, real life training again. Yeah, that would be, that would be excellent. Okay, Christian, it was a pleasure to have you. Thank you for being my guest.
thanks for having me and give me give giving me the opportunity to talk about my thoughts and plans and uh, <laughs> the why that is it <laughs> the, the why <laughs> in karate so thanks for the opportunity Leo. it was a pleasure